Hello and welcome to the TMC Newsroom. My name is Rich Trani. Thanks for watching us today. We're in Massachusetts today and we are working with a lot of companies here doing some interviews, learning about what's happening in technology, some trends, some of the hot companies in uh, the Northeast. Uh, on our program is Jim Hanley. He's the co-founder and CEO of NetBlazer. Uh, Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich. Good to be here. So let's start at the top. Tell me a little bit about your company. So we're a, we're a new broadband provider focused on uh, small and medium businesses in metropolitan areas. We launched service here in Boston uh, just over a year ago. We have a pilot network that we're building out in the back bay of Boston. And the intention is to uh, grow neighborhood by neighborhood and eventually cover all of Boston, including the, metro, you know, the, the suburban areas eventually. So in terms of uh, cost for somebody who wants to get involved with a Boston business or uh, a business in another area that you happen to expand into, how does it work? So the, the, the basic uh, offering is, uh, is, is radically cheaper broadband service. We're really, we see ourselves as not a, a competitor to the existing incumbents. We really are creating a, a new category of broadband service. Uh, commodity internet, possibly, is a way to describe it. Uh, much like a Skype business model. It's a, it's a freemium model. So basic DSL type service speeds we give away for free to right. our customers. And if you want faster speeds or better performance on your link, our, our model is to price ourselves at about 10% uh, or one-tenth of what the going market rates are in the marketplace. So uh, it's, it's, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a web company. It's really a software business that manages, manages equipment. And so a customer would, uh, in, for about two ninety nine, they install some equipment in their office, out their office windows. Uh, and that allows them to connect to the NetBrit Blazor cooperative. And as a member of the co-op, you either can have free internet or really, really cheap internet. And so there's, there's no contracts, there's no SLAs. It's just a different commodity-based internet, basically. So it's, uh, it's radically different than anything else in the market today. Really, and at that low price point, it makes sense for people. I mean, that's less than, uh, you could pay more retail price. Like if you break your smartphone, you're gonna pay seven, $800 right. to get a new smartphone. And so you're talking about here for, for free DSL service is a, a two, three hundred bucks, right? And, and so the, the positioning in the marketplace is really is we are a complement, we are a uh, co-primary to your existing network provider. So well, as we went out and talked with dozens and dozens of, uh, of small business owners and IT professionals within small, small uh, business industries, uh, they came back saying, hey, their clients, they always either encourage their clients or they want to have one, uh, two or more providers to actually have better reliability for their networks. But oftentimes, it's either not available for technical reasons, there's just only Verizon Copper, for instance, coming into your building, uh, or it's not available for economic reasons. It costs a lot of money to get a second really expensive provider. And so the companies, right. so they really don't have two providers, even though they all want two providers. So NetBlazer's model is to be that second or sometimes even a third provider for companies and to be that, just that new category of service, which is just commodity internet, uh, no frills, just cheap internet. All IT professionals know what to do with it. <laughs> they connect it to their networks. They do load sh sharing and load balancing on their networks, and, and they are off to the races. Well, in these days, it's so important to have multiple sources of connectivity because you know, we rely on it for, for everything from voice to video to email to... It's critical, mission critical to businesses today, and the fact that we are a secondary provider uh, we come through the window. Right. So instead of being another cable in the floor, a cable in the street, we all know there's risks associated with that. NetBlazer actually delivers a cable through your window, basically. And I didn't even mention cloud, but as companies move more and more to the cloud, it becomes essential that the applications that they don't have on premise are accessible. That's right. And the connectivity is even more critical to their business. And so walk me through uh, pricing then for, for companies. Now, you said it's one-tenth they're going rate, but what does that equate so, to? Yeah, so there, there's two categories of our service today. We have a, a, a shared service, which is uh, uh, similar to the shared platforms that you get with a, a DSL line or a cable modem line. Those, those lines aren't dedicated. You, your, your performance on your, of, your, of your connection varies throughout the day. It varies on how much that carrier has oversold the, sold the connection. Uh, and so that's a, it's a kind of a, a run-of-the-house type of a service. You get whatever's available on the network at that time based on what you've signed Overselling is where you're thought to be getting one megabit, but really there's 15 people or, you know, X number of people they're that all are all being told they're going to get one or 1 1.5 exactly. megabits, and at the end of the day, you don't actually get what you're... Exactly. ...what you thought you were getting. 
And so for those services, exactly, that's exactly right, Rich. So those services, we start off with uh, our entry level point, which is free. There's, if, you, if you purchase the equipment for a node, connect to our network, you can get free basic three megabits up, three megabits down connection from us forever. Uh, and, and then we have an uncapped version of that same shared plan, which you know, today our, our, with our current technology, we're seeing up to you know, 45 or 50 megabits per second you know, with peak, peak usage basically on that plan. But that's again, it's a shared plan. It's very different than our, our dedicated circuits. And many business customers prefer to have a dedicated circuit. These are circuits that we don't oversubscribe. Uh, and so this is like your T1 or your Metro Ethernet connections that you can get from your traditional carriers. And we basically price ourselves. We take the big telco price list and we take a zero off the end of it. And so our, our, our pricing is, is ten, one tenth of their list price, which is, you know, the going market is oftentimes below that. So we tend to be about one fifth of the, the most aggressive player in the marketplace. Still radically different price points radically different cost structure for our service. Now you said T1 or Metro Ethernet. Did you mean T3 or Metro Ethernet? Oh, it just wasn't T1, right. T3, or Metro okay. Ethernet. You know, our, our circuits run from, we have a two meg uh, symmetrical circuit for $49.99. We have uh, you know, a, a 10 meg circuit for $200, a 20 meg circuit for, for $400. Oh, these are really low, right, low rates. Yeah, that's about one-tenth what you're seeing in the marketplace. Wow. So, um, I mean, it's just revolutionary technology. So it's, it's just a blend of mesh, a blend of peer-to-peer. -peer. I mean, just a lot of different things coming together. And th there's unlicensed frequencies that you're using, yes. right, to make this happen. It's very secure. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the business model is just, we, we are basically taking a web, uh, a web business model and applying it to a traditional telco infrastructure business. You know, our, our care model is going to be a web-style care model. Uh, our, our network is effectively an infrastructure-less network. Our our, our customers, our members of our cooperative, they buy the equipment. That equipment functions as both a node for their own usage and a repeater for other people further downstream from them. So that is a, that radically, I mean, our infrastructure cost is almost nothing to build our right. network out. And then our, you know, our only other cost to our business is really our customer acquisition cost. And when you actually have free as part of your offering, uh, we believe that we're going to get a lot of word of sure. mouth sure. And, and we're going to be able to market our, our services without having an army of salespeople that are very expensive and sending you direct mail pieces twice a week like sure. the other guys do. Well, I mean, companies, I mean, at that low price, it makes sense <coughs> to try it out. Theoretically, though, if someone unplugs the equipment across the, across the street from you, does that have a significant impact, some impact? So, so you know, our, our model is to create a very dense network with uh, line of sight connections between all of our members. And so you, each member has three radios in their node. Some even have four if, if, it's, a, if it's a place that's really busy and there's lots of connections. And, and so our model is to, uh, you have always one path, a, a, a primary path back to the, the mothership, if you would, back to our fiber, fiber connected head end. And then a second radio to give you a second alternative path in the event the other first path ever goes down. And then the third radio is really a, is designed to expand our footprint into a new street, a new block, a new neighborhood that we weren't serving before. Okay. But that could even be a third path back eventually someday. But right now that we, our belief is that with, with two paths back, our reliability uh, in the future will look pretty similar to the traditional telco, you know, wire-based carriers. And, uh, you know, already our performance is not too far off from what theirs is today. So it's really impressive. What's next? Our next, uh, well, so we're focused on Boston. We've launched uh, here. We have, we have customers in Boston. And uh, next will be to expand to other cities. We'll probably start in the Northeast because it's close to home and we know the markets. And eventually our goal is to roll out to the top 50 metropolitan areas in America and then obviously beyond to international. That's great. Well, good luck. Thanks for being here. Thank you.